You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From Los Angeles, California, and Maria Menounos, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV Spotlight On. Spotlight On is a long-form interview series featuring actors and TV personalities. And now, from the world's number one TV after-show platform, this is AfterBuzz TV Spotlight On. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Spotlight On. I'm Ashley Daniels, your host today. I am with somebody who is not only a fellow Bostonian, but he has recently become another soap star, a uh, big soap star, on Days of Our Lives. He was on All My Children. He was also the first male model on Price is Right. I am with Mr. Robert Scott Wilson. What's up, everybody? <laughs> What's up, Ms. Daniels? Hello, hello. Thank My, you for coming today. Oh, thank you for having me. I know that, you know, we try to... I, I like to have as many, anytime I find somebody who's like really successful and from Boston, it's like, oh, it's man, extra exciting please. for me because I'm like, I'm rooting for me. our town. Uh-oh. No, you're gonna no, no. You're going to me. But thank no, you. No, no, no. I appreciate it. Thank you. But, um, <laughs> oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> as we both stare at Maria Menounos' abs. I know. I was just abs. like, oh, <laughs> We're just I like, I, I, it's very distracting, actually. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> um, so, okay. You're from Boston. And not to say that people that make it are not from other parts of mm. you know the country yep. but being from boston makes it much more difficult to do anything out here because you're starting from scratch it's not like you have family members that know people and can yeah. get you in the door and no, from that. that aspect for sure you're, you hit it on the head um yeah without a, without a question but i got pretty lucky in boston there was some filming going on there and it was just a tax incentive in massachusetts and i didn't know anything about acting i didn't want to be an actor i didn't I never was a little kid who was in theater and things like that, but uh, I got lucky enough to uh, hear about these castings. And I went to both of them and um, I, I booked them and ended up being able to put something on my resume, which ultimately kind of made me get bit by the acting bug. Yes. Uh, so that's kind of one good thing that happened from Boston. Okay, sure. but I have to say, truthfully, when I hear other people, or and even right now, when I hear people talk about they made it, and they're like, well, I had this one thing that happened, and then from there, I, I made it. I, I want to know, though, really, it's not that easy. It sounds, oh, no, it's, no, it, no. This it was, so, sounds so much easier this than it really is. This is not an easy is. task. This city and this, this industry is so crazy. There's so many compensating factors that are just completely out of the actor's hands. You can just go in there and, and do your best work and just try to leave it in the room because it, there's just so much that goes on behind the scenes that you'll never know about. Could be a million yeses you could have you could leave there feeling like a million bucks but uh all it takes is one separate point of view and that could be it right so yeah it's very right. difficult for sure now you were cast by somebody from days of our lives that obviously hmm. marnie i love marnie yeah she was, marnie's the best marnie the seda best. so she's a another bostonian yeah, from Boston so, as well. and she's so cool so and, and it's funny because <laughs> i feel like that's very rare to find a casting director yeah. who's the head. She does all of the casting. She does, I think she even she does the under fives she and the extras. She does the under fives. She books the extras every day for the background. And she's she's a hard worker. She really is. But I think that's kind of what it takes. She she does a really good job at what she does. So. Yeah, she does. So let's best. let's start from the beginning. So you, when did you actually realize this was what you wanted to do? Was it something you always knew? No, it wasn't. It really wasn't. I kind of, like I said, I, I fell into a couple of roles. It's really crazy because I... I didn't want to model. I didn't want to act. I didn't. I didn't have that desire. Truly, I didn't know what I wanted. But then when I found it, I blacked out. Like that was really about it. I knew it wasn't going to be. I wasn't going to be happy doing anything else. I don't care whether it was the money or the or the time put in or whatever it was. It was just uh, that's all I wanted to do. So. So you had this feeling that you just never had with anything else you ever yeah, did. Yeah, I was just intrigued by the whole aspect. I got to work. My first scenes were with Anne Hathaway. I got to improv a scene on Bride Wars with Anne Hathaway, that's and funny. I just. I loved how it was all where it was very freeing and I, w I was always kind of a shy person I still feel like I'm kind of shy sometimes but uh I like it. it's like therapeutic for me sometimes the in class or work or whatever it's good it's therapeutic yeah something that stressful that difficult yeah so it's interesting so do you feel like a lot of people that you've met in the industry who are actors are also shy yeah I think so I mean I think you have to keep a level of mystery if you, if you want to be an actor but mm -hmm. I mean nowadays like with social media and everything you got to be personable and relatable as well so it's like a fine line you got to kind of know where to draw the line and I think that's the main thing right so when was the first time you actually 
was that the actual first time you acted? Uh, like, with the Anne well, were you yeah, doing? Yeah, You're kidding. So you actually, you grew up. You were like ten, yeah, eleven. I, I played. I played sports in high school. I grew up in a small no town. Way. Like that's what I did. I, I played basketball and football. I was. I played paintball. It was like a huge thing for me in my life from the time I was like thirteen to. 18 years old, I used to travel all over the country and shoot people with guns uh, oh my God. on tournament fields. Like, that was my background, you know, um, and growing up anyway as a kid. So I wasn't like a theater kid. It wasn't just in me. Um, but I think that all happened for a reason because now I can kind of use my background as that. I've never, I wasn't, I wasn't like in film school. I didn't do that. I didn't do that at all. Um, now, I mean, I went to acting classes for years yeah, since right, I got here. But right. other than that, it wasn't like something I knew. Forever. So when you did get cast with Anne Hathaway mm -hmm. in that scene, you had no experience. No, no, You zero. had no resume. I didn't know what was going on. I, I, and you just I went applied there with a for the headshot. I had a headshot. It? it looked like I was like a general manager of a grocery store <laughs> in this headshot that I got taken. or was like a class picture or something. And I went to this giant casting call that was in a, a, a school. I think it was Weymouth. I think it was in Weymouth. It was a big auditorium. There's tons of people. I'm sitting there, one of me and a friend of mine, and uh. Yeah, like I just went through the whole lineup and handed off my headshot and just forgot about it. And then I got oh a call. They were like, you're going to actually have lines with the lead. And I was like, I don't know who the lead is. I don't even know what this movie is, but sure. Oh, my God. And then God. I got blown away. And it was just awesome. And you loved it. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. So you got the bug right there. I got the bug. And so when did you decide I'm going to move to L.A.? How soon after that? Two years after that. Because I, okay. uh, at that point, I had just moved back from New York. I was in New York uh, kind of getting a, a sales background. I was working. I was doing mortgages. I was like right out of high school. I wanted to do finance. And uh, I fell into a great group of people that kind of took me out of my shell and made me more outgoing. And uh, it was just a huge experience that I think carried over to me now. Because uh, you need to know business if you want to like, kind of work. Because you can act forever and you could never earn a dollar at it and make it a career. Or you can make it a business and have it be your career. How much of acting is branding I'm sweating, yourself? Sorry, I'm like, is it hot in here for you? you yeah, a little bit. All right. Maybe we can, can we get some air, you think? It's, thank you so much. Cool, okay. nice. <laughs> we want to make Sorry. sure you're comfortable. So how much of being an actor um, and being a successful actor mm. uh, includes branding yourself and, and having a business sense of how you're going to market yourself? I mean, I think it's everything. I mean, you have to know your brand no matter what you do if you're, you're, you're kind of out there marketing yourself and things like that and you got to know the right people on your team to kind of help guide you in the right direction. I think it's very important. Right. Sure. So what's the first thing you did when you moved out here? You First of all, you tell your, you just say, I'm, I'm moving out here to your family. Mm -hmm. And they're like, what? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the hardest was for my mom. My mom raised me and that was the hardest one to leave. But everything else, it, was, it just the stars aligned like it was supposed to be. I didn't move back to New York. I started looking for places here in LA and it just all worked out. So. And you move out here and now you are, you're brand new. You have no idea really where you are. You're like completely lost in a sense. I mean, mm -hmm. you're, this is, this place is very overwhelming yeah, when you're by yeah. yourself. Of course. So, what makes you decide I'm going to, you know, what what was the first steps you took? Was it like acting classes? Was it getting a job? Mm -hmm. Was it getting a place? What was it? Uh, well, I had, a, I had an agency here and I was being oh, you sent already? out. Oh, Okay. Yeah, I, I just, it just lined up. I kind of went to their open calls and kind of just grinded my way through. I ended up getting with a great manager and um, everything just started kind of developing from there. Okay. Which was good. Is Thank that God. your manager today? Yeah, Marsha Wiseman. Wow. Marsha Wiseman. So my she little, saw your lady whole... in Studio City. Yes. Unbelievable. Yeah, she's. I got referred to her through a friend, uh, my friend Hector, Hector David Jr. He's the Green Power Ranger and uh, a bunch of other things. He works on uh, that that new show on Hulu. What's it called? What's his new show? Well, it's. East Lowest High. East Lowest High. Thank He's you, also Janelle. on East Lowest High. <laughs> I had to give him a shout out to my brother. Awesome. So, so your manager watched you throughout this entire time. Now, how many years have you actually been out here? Four years. Four years. Mm -hmm. So in four years, you went from having basically nothing on your resume to mm -hmm. being a lead on Days of Our Lives and a prior lead on All My Children and yeah. like ugh, lots and lots and lots of guest stars yeah, and, yeah, it was and great. recurring roles. It's, it's, it's been a blessing. Everything has come together greatly. I just hope it continues. I thank God every day and I just, you know, I just, I don't know. I'm just very grateful, you know, because I know how fast it can be gone, you know. It, I felt great last year too. I was working on Price and, and all my mm -hmm. children and all of a sudden both came to a, a screeching halt for a short right. period of time and luckily I I got the offer to do this and I started in January. So so when you got Price, explain how that all came about. Um, I was with Ford, uh, my print agent at the time and they sent me this open call. They told me about for the Price is Right and I was kind of like this was going to be the biggest cattle call of all time and it was. And I went through the whole process, man. I was a part of the first group that got picked out of like, literally there was like 
2,000 people at CVS Radford. It was obnoxious. It wasn't just models from the town. It was people from all walks of life. It looked like an American Idol audition. It was crazy. Uh, so I didn't want to be there. Uh, but as soon as I got to meet everybody and I saw what it narrowed down to, the 26 of us, and we started shooting the webisodes, then I wanted to be there, of course. And as it narrowed down, I wanted to win. And then luckily, I got voted and I won. Now, <laughs> I, I don't know how. So you, I don't know how. So you spent over a year... At the Price is Right, mm -hmm. as a model, yeah, showing right. off the appliances, hanging out mm. with Drew Carey, doing That's it. whatever. Now that must have been something that you did. You do you do you go into these auditions thinking you're going to book it? Uh, was it a surprise well, sometimes to you? I like to, you know, it's always a, it's always a crapshoot because, like I said, there's so many compensating factors behind everything. But sometimes you feel really good going into the room if you feel like it just fits for you. But I didn't know if this was going to fit for me. Um, but then we were going through all the motions and doing all these ridiculous things as part of the casting. And uh, and then I, I was having a blast, you know, and it, I don't know, it all worked out. That's I had fun so with crazy. It. it was a great gig. It was a great opportunity. Um, I never aspired to be hanging on jet skis on The Price is Right, but it's what happened. It was part of my journey, and I'm very happy for it. I'm glad it happened. Now, did you get All My Children before Price is Right? No, right after. I got it about eight months after. Casting directors sometimes like say months. that people that book one commercial mm -hmm. are in a lot of commercials, um, or people that book one TV show are in a lot of them because they get an overwhelming sense of confidence that just kind of spirals. Oh, well, no question. It's like anything else. It's like, you know, a real estate agent that sells 10 houses in a month. He's feeling way better than the guy who didn't sell any last month. So his chances of him continuing are a lot better. Do you, you feel know, like momentum that's is a real you? thing. I think momentum is real and it carries throughout your life. And if you're down and you stay down, you're mentally down, you're probably going to be there for a while. But if you're feeling good and things are coming your way, just keep that door open. Let it come freely. I hate to I say feel. this, but so many people do have that sense and so many people in this industry end up failing at it and they have this confidence and they have this this hope that I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it right. and they're out here 10, 12, 15, yeah. 20 plus years and it's they still have this I think, confidence. I think, those, I think anybody, I mean, it's just like I said, it's there's just so much that goes on with it. I think you need to expend your energy, expend your energy, what's the word? Expend yeah. your energy yeah. someplace else rather than if it's not working one way, you got to switch it up and you have to figure out if you really want to work and you want to do those things, you have to kind of apply it into the different parts that need it, whether it be your representation or, or your classes. You need to be in class if, you, if, you know, if something's not working, you got to figure out what the problem is. But I think some people work harder instead of smarter here in this town. Harder instead of smarter. They work harder instead of smarter. Like you can work a lot less and do the right things and you can have a lot better chance of doing it or working it all depends where you're where you're where you want to be right you know not everybody right. wants to work on a soap it's not for everybody um i didn't know if it was for me but i fell in love with it and i got very lucky to be part of it it's weird it's crazy this town it's crazy how did you prepare i've been on set of of, of soaps before mm -hmm. and i have to say i was so taken aback by the amount of time that these people have to put into these lines i mean you you mm. you have to you have to do what a couple episodes a day yeah so sometimes yeah you were obviously you did a lot of of guest starring and recurring roles but uh to prepare for for um all my children versus days was mm -hmm. there a difference since all my children was online um, did you have more time with all my children or was it the same no no we, the, the period of time is the same i mean oh, we will get our scripts like a week ahead for x amount forward but to really work on them all and to be in the moment, you kind of have to go day to day and scene to scene. Um, but, you know, I'll always work as hard as I can on everything I get. And I'll always read everything as far ahead as I get. But to actually put in the time, it's always the night before. Like, I'm always grinding and getting my getting the words right and then let it all happen out there. Just kind of leave it. But, um, yeah, it's we're fast, man. It's like the Wild West. We shoot very, very fast. A lot of the <laughs> actors say that so actors say that they build you build your memory over time. It, it gets uh, stronger and stronger. It's Do just like going to the difference? gym. I tell yeah, hands down. I mean, hands down. Uh, even coming stepping away from it for a few months when all my children ended, um, like six months or eight months. Um, even coming back, it was kind of it wasn't like exactly like riding a bike. It took to get back in the momentum because the new character and all that. But the the work ethic is the same. Uh, soaps are definitely the hardest working people in this in this town because it's the workload is serious. If you're a contract and you're working four to five times a week, uh, doing one to three episodes a day, sometimes mm -hmm. it's like the work ethic has to be there, and you have to prepare. It's just being prepared. Yep. Just like anything else, just come prepared. But not having be you have you weren't an actor growing mm -hmm. up, so I, it's just it's so mind boggling to me that you have the ability. To just from acting, not to say just from acting classes, but really 
just from acting classes out here, you are able to remember these lines or able to mm -hmm. get in your character so quickly. Is it just that sometimes people are born with it? Oh, I don't know. You know, people have said that and it's like, I think, I don't know. I think I like to believe that to a little bit because it's such a weird medium medium to be a part of and I think you have to be a little bit weird to do it. Yeah. And I mean, I've never met anybody that's a good actor that's not weird. In one way or another, it's like, dude, you're weird. You know? You're not weird though. I'm, I don't think you're I'm pretty weird. effing weird. I don't know if I can swear, but yeah, you can I'm swear. Pretty, I'm fucking weird. You're fucking weird. <laughs> yeah. You don't look. I, I don't know. I, I I've known you quite some. I don't think you're weird. Okay, I think you're well, very normal. Thank you, Ashley. I, I really do. It. And so I, I I've met weird. I don't know if you really. Oh know no, I've what met weird, weird too. Is. Okay, Trust I've me. really met weird. Trust me, I've met weird too, but I think I am. I don't know. I'm a little weird. But there, I think there is some part that is that you're born with it because I've met so many actors out here who are so driven and mm -hmm. they've been out here for years yeah, and, totally. and they're still hanging on that one role that they had five years ago mm. and they oh, have yeah. this dream and it's and it's and it's it's gotta, wonderful gotta... to see but mm -hmm. it's still like, it's still like did you ever think to yourself if did you ever give yourself a time limit because you are a guy oh, no, and there's no, no, more no, no. pressure? I never did that. I try to tell all my friends to not do that shit either. You didn't it's the do worst, that. It's the worst idea you could possibly do. You're gonna put a time limit limit on something you want more than anything. You can't do that. You can't put a time limit on something. But isn't it more pressure being a man than yeah, versus I, I being think, a girl? All I think about is that it's like urgency. There's an urgency. That's my time limit. It has to happen right away. I want it done yesterday on anything. Uh, that, that's just, that's my time limit. And that is something I think I learned from being part of the business when I got to go to New York and Mass, like back home in Massachusetts as well, being part of like sales and the urgency of, you know, time is money type of thing. Right. That goes for everything. Like, I don't like to wait on stuff. If it's of importance, you have to get it done. Like, But if you were advising another actor right now who is listening, who is aspiring to be in your position someday, and you say this, does it come, do you think that it takes a certain person to understand the sense of urgency? Because some people could come across desperate. You know, yeah, no, no. That. And that's very true. You're good. Right. Actually, you're good. Well, I mean, you know, I'm you're just, good. I'm, I'm just, uh, really, I'm just, I want to make no, sure. No, you're I... right. You're absolutely right. Never, you never want to look desperate. Right. There's a difference between being desperate and, Urgency is something you're not bringing to anybody else other okay, than yourself. Okay, that's okay. You know, that's not, the that's, distinguishing factor. That's something factor. you keep in your mind. Right. You don't tell yourself you're desperate. You you tell yourself like, listen, I want this more than anything. I have to figure out a way to get there as fast as I can, whether whatever it may be. Like some things, you have to have patience, though. You know. So like someone who is very urgent, like me, I had my manager and everybody yelling at me, patient. You know, don't worry, Rob. This and that. Right now, I got. She's probably messaging me right now to calm down about something we're working on. Like, right. And it's just like it is what it is. You know. That's you got to pray for patience, but right. keep the urgency. So you don't bring that into any audition room. That's the difference. They don't no, know. No, you take your, no, I mean, they everybody's that different. You everybody's less. different. I'm not saying whatever I'm, whatever I'm doing is exactly right. It's, it's worked to a certain is. degree. Right. It's worked to a certain degree, but um, everybody works differently. Everybody. There's no blueprint on how to kind of do this industry right. or like how to make it or whatever you want to call it. Like, right. Because like I said, I, I'm very grateful for what I do have right now because I know how fast it can be taken away. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Right. It's crazy. So how, now do you still in acting classes? Do you actually have the time? Now? I wish. Um, yeah. I'm not right now, but trust me, Days of Our Lives is an acting class. I was going to say, isn't um, it kind I'm, of feel I'm like I'm working that? every day. I'm learning more now than I have in any class. Um, really? I take what I've, I take what I could from each of the classes and I would never advise anybody not to be in acting class if you want to be an actor. But uh, it's like, you want to be a doctor, you got to go to school. Right. You got to kind of know. Um how to get there and help you get there but uh no I'm, this is definitely like a class now it's an all-day class every day do you ever hire a private coach for an audition or do you i had i had i had quite a bit no no i've always i've met with from my teachers i worked with in different places i, I went to playhouse west for a while uh, i worked with a guy named ken lerner who was awesome when i first moved here um I everything heard. everything helped ken ken was great uh, i worked with ken i met with leslie khan i've been there mm. uh I mean, I've, it's, I've bounced around. I worked with a lot of casting directors when I got the relationships after I was here a couple of years. Um, I had some close calls for some roles or whatnot, and I kept a good relationship with some of them. I worked with Michael Testa a lot. He used to cast a lot of stuff for CW and uh, Nick and things like that at Sony. Uh, Michael coached me for a couple soaps that I didn't get. Michael you know? did? Michael Testa, yeah. You isn't Shana Testa? Yeah, right? Shana Testa. He, yeah. They, they split apart their oh, they corporation. Oh, okay. but. Michael is still, you know, relevant in town and he he's still no cast way. projects and he, you know, he coached me. So I kind of just worked, I worked with random people, random right. people, you know, because I don't, no one's really going to tell you how to act at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a very like trusting, like personal exp like type of thing. And uh, it's personal type of thing. It's a good yeah, it's very right. personal. It I mean, it's very trusting, you know, it's just 
but not, it's not reinventing the wheel no one's really going to tell you how to do it but it's just nice to have things brought to the surface and we're very lucky on our show i've never had that before we have a a, a coach at our show oh, all do? day maria o'brien oh, wow. we're working with maria o'brien she's a genius she's she's a genius and the best like i love maria thank god for her how much does she put herself into each role is it just if she notices that you need help or does she go up to every no, no, actor it's not, and it's help not about them? that it's just we shoot at such a fast pace that we don't always have time to work with our you know supporting our, our co-star or whoever if i'm working with kate in the afternoon all day but she's got scenes in the morning we're not gonna be able to rehearse so luckily maria's there to kind of go over it and really she really brings it like she's awesome and always helps us get to get those other moments and don't let anything pass and it's just it's really a blessing to have her i didn't have that in all my children so right. this was nice now a lot of actors that are moving out here and they don't really know what to do and they have all these there's so many programs there's so many websites there's so many everything casting director workshops right. and people sometimes pour all their money into things thinking that it's going to help them so if you were to advise somebody that wanted to be an actor you know about casting director workshops mm. about classes would you say that classes are more important would you say that they're no, both i think important? you should do it a little bit of both i mean you have to spread yourself out and make sure you're being you're meeting the right people, you know. How do you know that? And being, I, I think I mean, it's just you may personal. just be intuitive, I think but some people don't have oh, that. Oh no, totally. And I think it's uh, it's just the experience. Like you'll know if you're getting something out of a class, or if you're intrigued by the person you're talking to, and you want to listen to them, and it and it makes sense to you. Um, I don't think it's anything more than that, you know. So I think you have kind of have to audit places, go to the classes. Yeah. Like you just kind of kind of make the rounds. You kind of just gotta live it. You got to live yeah. it. You got to make the audits and see who, what kind of classes you like and what you think helps you. And it's just weird. Not just coming from me. I'm not saying it's right. No, like, right, right. Uh, everything, it's different for everybody. But but your business, do you think that your business sense helped you at all in, in distinguishing somebody that's maybe having a casting director workshop that maybe that workshop seems a little shady and it's like somebody else would be there like, yeah, oh my no, gosh, I think this so. is my... For sure. And you're like, sure. uh-uh, no. Yeah, no, for sure. Like, I don't know. I, I mean, you'll usually get a good reference to a good acting coach or places you know if other people if it's, it's helped other people but yeah i mean there's a lot of everybody thinks they're an acting coach or an actor out here and all you know anything to make a dollar in this town right you know it's obnoxious yeah. but you know you can kind of sift through it you can sift through the shit and find yeah. the real stuff true. you know it's have you ever true. had a moment where you were screwed over by somebody out here or somebody you know said they were one thing and then another thing happened i mean i know I mean, it probably happens a lot. Yeah, and that I mean, never screwed over. No, I haven't really ever been screwed over. It feels like a shot to the jaw sometimes when you feel like you're on hold for projects, or if you have all these green lights and you change your flights and you don't fucking get it. Yeah. Of course, it drives you a little nuts, yeah. but you're not being screwed over. It's just yeah. part of the just part of the fabric in this crazy industry. Right. Mm. Now, I I noticed with a lot of TV shows when you first watch them, the characters are kind of sometimes you don't connect with them or they don't connect with themselves is it because it's it's more difficult to find your character for the pilot or the first episode of something versus like now you're doing it four or five times and you you're well, more I mean, comfortable I think with it, it it all comes down to experience and some actors have a lot of character or a lot of um, ability to, to to see certain things or know certain people to portray that type of role um, but it comes down to experience certain actors can have 12 different characters in their wheelhouse that they can kind of get into if the if it fits the right thing if they read a script and it works for them and it feels like them you can do that um my wheelhouse isn't that expanded you know I'm, i've just really started i've been here for four years um but now after being here four years i feel very much experienced compared to uh, a lot of my my friends that you know need to to get that get, gain that experience and I just hope we all do it. You know, I just want us all to work together and us all to do these these awesome projects like one day on our own. Right. You know, that's what I really want. How much of Rob Wilson is in Ben Rogers and Pete Cortland? Oh my God, a bunch, a bunch in Pete Cortland. Pete Cortland was all business minded except the fact that he came. He came from a, Pete Cortland came from money and he was Welcome. successful on his own. He, like dropped Didn't out of college. Did you have that scene with the Porsche when you? First yeah, came? yeah, I got, I got the. He had a Porsche and the kid. You know, I played. Uh, I played uh, twenty. I think he's twenty. How old was he? 22, 21, I think Peter Cortland was. And uh, Ben is like me in a different aspect, meaning he didn't come from money. He was kind of not a loner. Ben's a loner. I'm not really a loner, but uh, I've kind of gone off on my own quite a bit. I've been on my own for a while. And uh, Ben was a lot like that, and he had a lot more struggle. And he's a lot more... Uh, you can relate to him a lot more than somebody okay. who comes from money and it gains more money, you know? Mm -hmm. So Ben is a lot more relatable. He's got a very 
serious temper, which we've got to showcase a lot on the show, which was fun to play. But Do you feel like you have guy. a real grasp on Ben Rogers now? 100%, yeah. I mean, I'm learning more and more about him. They told me very little when I first signed on to the show, but I'm learning more about him. I'm finding him, and now I just, I'm comfortable now. You know, everything that's airing now is my first, like, couple months on the show, and I was just getting my feet wet with the character and really just knowing the people I'm working with. I didn't, I didn't know any of these people. I didn't. I hadn't I didn't have to test for this project luckily so I didn't even get a chance to really meet them before I you know That's started crazy. Um, it's like going to a new school it's like going to a new school it's just like that so Times eventually 10. you you figure out who who bonds with you and what you know you, you find your group and you're luckily I've I fell in love with everybody they're all great working with all of them have been awesome so you are got I, very I, lucky yeah you are lucky that's great that you all can actually yeah get I've heard along. horror stories I know, you know I know luckily I mean so far so good knock on wood yeah. somewhere but yeah, somewhere. um no, we're good. Go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> That's wood. really cool. So, what cool. It, what do you actually have coming up now that you can talk about? Mm, I can oh, talk about it's, it's really hard. Here? It's really hard with days because we we do shoot so far in advance. So, for example, I started the first week of January. My stuff didn't start airing till the end of May. So, I don't know oh, what's geez. about to start airing in comparison to where you know where we're at. So, um, what I can tell you is that. Obviously, uh, Ben has taken a liking to Abigail, played by Kate Manzi, and he, he wants to help his sister stay in this town. He wants to stop running, um, obviously, because he's after a girl, classic. And he wants to open up, you know, a home here in, in, in Salem, and he, he finds his way. But along the way, um, certain somebody comes to town who he's kind of been running from and his family's been running from and starts the drama, man. Classic soap drama. So you got to watch. What about those stare downs? Do you do those? Oh, I do stare downs every day. So how do you do those? Tag shots. Can we do one? Let's see if we can do sure. one. Okay, so we just finished our lines. Uh -huh. Okay, so now do we What'd you say to me? Okay, I said, um, I know you killed my brother. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have broke. I did, you broke before me. That's hilarious. I usually you really have to do those all day long and you have to keep a straight face, oh, correct? Oh, yeah, it's not always that, but it's close. That was actually pretty close, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, felt, felt, cool. felt pretty good. But you really have to do that all the time. Yeah, no, there's always tag shots on somebody. It's always mm -hmm. fun. Now I'm just, it's just part of it now. It's part of the genre, it's part of the work. But when I first started, it was always funny, the flashback scenes. And I really I really love it now because when it all comes together, it's great for the viewer. It's fun to watch. It makes it fun. And these flashback scenes, you'll be doing a scene and all of a sudden you'll stop and you'll hear one of our stage managers clap. You've seen it. Yes. At, you were at General Hospital, yes. right? Uh, you know, you're, all right, flashback, you let it go and they'll just stand there and you'll have your flashback and you're just that inner monologue going and all of a sudden, all right, you're out. Yep. And it's like, fuck, it's going to be any yep. more like out of the moment. But then you get used to that technique, that that way of them shooting it. And it the phone helps. calls too are always funny because you're really not, you're on the phone with like, you're one of the um, direct ADs or yeah, somebody will yeah, be like really, on the phone with you. Yeah, it's really fast because if like Chriselle's not there, my, the one who plays my sister, we're always on the phone. Me and Chriselle oh, are always okay, on the phone okay. together. And uh, if she's not there that particular moment to shoot that scene, it'll be one of our stage managers. But it's cool. It's cool. It's, you know, it, I know the character. I, I know who I'm listening to. Mm -hmm. So regard, regardless if they're there or not, I know kind of where we're at. How was cool. it last night being at the Emmys? Emmys was great. Um, yeah. We had a good time. The show was kind of a, a mess, to be honest. It was kind of a mess. But uh, mm -hmm. I think this whole year was a, a, a year of change for it. But I think it'll be back to normal next year. This yeah. year, this year, I think they got shell shocked on how they went about certain things. But mm -hmm. um, all the nominees, everybody won, should have won. You know, it was cool. It was good. Unfortunately, my people at Price is Right didn't win Best Game Show, but they won hey. last year. Yeah. Um, and Days won last year as well so mm -hmm. for Best Daytime Drama. So that was great. But we didn't win this year. Okay. Why not took it? Which is cool. But yeah. Well, you know, now next, no, you weren't even in the. For this year, the voting, you didn't even... Oh, no, no, no. So no, you'll no. change that. Yeah, next now, next year, <laughs> now next year we're going to win. No, I don't want to jinx that. What are you working on outside of days? Is there anything you can talk about for your right fans? Right now, I can't, to be honest. Uh, okay. I just had a couple of things I finished at the beginning of the year. Rather, the end of 2013 that aired the beginning of this year, um, which was great. But right now, this first year, I'm pretty much like... I'm just on days next mm -hmm. year i have a couple outs and i can start kind of going out again but mm -hmm. um i had some stuff on the show surviving jack that was a comedy on fox which is really really fun uh, and that's like one of the exact shows i wish i could work on yeah. for a long time after down the road or whatever it may be or at least the experience where chris maloney was hilarious and the whole crew was good um I did some, I don't know how, but I did some Disney show and I, I played like a 17 year old kid. I was just going to yeah. say, you get cast as a young guy a yeah, lot of well, times. They had me I mean, like really young. Like it's driving me nuts. Disney. They got me looking like a teenager. <laughs> 
fuck, I can't deal <laughs> with it. A, but that's 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 a I'll compliment, it, though. Yeah, I'll take you know it for that. the time being. But it's like, damn, I'm like the most I'm like the most weathered 26 year old, <laughs> and yet I'm playing this 17 year old and with a real 17 year old. Crazy. Like, oh my god. Oh my god. Anyway. So day you're doing days. You 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 can't really talk about anything outside. But how have you? What have the fans been like from All My Children versus Days? Or, I mean, did you have a long enough time to really experience fans. the fans? Yeah, no. All My Children, there was great because I it was really just the soap fans in general because a lot of them know what's going on with other shows of support. Not always. They all like they all have their stories, just like your mom or your grandma, mm-hmm. or just like my mom and my yep. grandma have their stories, and then they watch their stories. That's it. But they're all familiar. You know, they're all familiar with all of them. They have all been great. They've been they've opened me with welcome with open arms. They've welcomed me with open arms. Excuse yes. me. And uh. It was really great. Everybody at Days is awesome. The the fans are great. There's a lot of fans last night. We got to, you know, I, personally meet, which doesn't get to happen too often. That's awesome. Um, which is really really fun. But yeah, that's so the cool. Soap, the soap fans, they're crazy. They are right. They they're they are crazy. so loyal. They are the most loyal fans Hands down. out of every. I mean, they have been watching for sometimes 50, yeah, 60 yeah, years. Absolutely. These people have been absolutely. so totally. to be embraced is is a is a huge compliment, bigger mm-hmm. than any other show. Yeah, no, and to come on and you know it's, they have their characters. Luckily, uh, my role was only portrayed bef- uh, before me for a very short amount of time, so nobody could really, you know, you could still love. They they, they could have still liked the other guy as well, but. Uh, you know, there wasn't a chance for them to really be attached to him for years, like some of these characters that have been yes. on for a long time. So luckily, I didn't come in and replace somebody that has been on the show for years. Right. It was a rather quick change. So they're just learning the character, not really the person. Right now, they're just learning the character. Right. Um, so, What's so far, so good. What's your dream role? Dream role? Dream role out of anything. If you can do something and you can, I can make, wave my magic wand and say... Wolf of Wall Street 2 with Leo. <laughs> yeah, hands down. Best movie ever. Hands down. Totally. Hands down. Who's your favorite actor? My favorite actor, or like that you that you it's really so inspires you, something that really inspires well, you. Well, you know, be a director, actor, Boston whatever. Kids, like, I'm, I know. Even though, like, I I think other work could be maybe better sometimes, but like, I'm a huge Wahlberg fan. I'm a big Ben Affleck. I like guys that made Scorsese, it from from the from the East. You know, oh yeah, Scorsese. I mean, he's the best director ever. Yeah. He's one of the best. He's amazing. Yeah. Um, but I got I like so many. I like Mike, Michael Fassbender a lot. I like Jeremy Piven a lot. Um, uh, you know, of course Brad Pitt. Mm-hmm. And I mean, when Leo, this whole the past couple of years of Leo has just been oh insane. God. Like I've always loved them, but like my favorite moments for actors is just when they get to red line. And I don't think anybody can red line like Leonardo DiCaprio. And he red lines 90% of the movie during Wolf of Wall Street. So that's just fun for me. Fun for I me to watch. I think we can see you in a Wolf of Wall Street. Maybe like a Wolf totally. of Wall Street yeah. 3 or something. Yeah. 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 I would love it. That's awesome. So <laughs> where could your fans find you and, and connect with you? Do you have like any that can send you fan mail or can they just... Yeah, I don't have the address on like hand, our- but yeah, at Days we have uh, any fan mail goes to Days of Our Lives at NBC uh, in Burbank, California. Um, what about like your Twitter and Instagram? Can they talk oh, to you on of there? Of course, yeah. Okay. My Twitter, Twitter is at Mr. Robert Scott, Mr. Robert Scott, and my Instagram is Robert Scott Wilson. It's just my full name, and um, yeah, I'll always write back to you guys. Awesome. I'll, I'll, I'll start better. I'll be better at it. I'll be better at it. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming in today and Thank you, Ms. talking Daniels. to me. Awesome. You rocked it. You are Boston awesome. Strong. So you can um, find our link to this on YouTube. I'll post it a little later. I'm at Miss Ashley Daniels on Twitter and Instagram, and we'll see you next time. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz see you you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here. And be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.